Hey, Dan here, and in this video, I want to share how I overcome creative procrastination. This isn't a strategy to use for dealing with little things like getting the dishes done, but a strategy to use to ensure that you do follow through with starting and finishing larger creative projects. Now, if you don't know me yet, if you're new to the channel here, a few things to know about me is number one, I'm a guy with ADHD. And number two, if you're into Myers-Briggs personality types, I'm an ENFP. Two aspects of personality, ADHD and being an ENFP, that are not exactly mutually exclusive from procrastination, shall we say. So by default, procrastinating is something that definitely comes to me. And when it comes to creative projects like writing a book, filming a video, um, anything like that, most people, regardless of your personality in day-to-day -day life, tend to have some level of procrastination. So there's a few reasons this happened, one of which is just natural preparation. You're unconscious going to work, trying to think things through and actually prepare. So I know for myself, before I actually get on camera, even though I don't have a script and often like in this video, I have no notes, there's nothing in front of me, that I am doing mental preparation. So maybe before filming, when I'm going for a walk or taking a shower, I'm thinking about the video and in a way writing it or scripting it, let's say unconsciously. And I know when I was writing books and will be writing again in the future, that this was a lot of my process. I would think about what I wanted to write the next day. And then the night before and the morning of, I would be processing unconsciously what I'd be writing. And then when I sat down, it was a lot easier. But that's not the strategy here that I use to ensure I actually follow through. The way I approach this kind of creative procrastination is to anticipate it and then to plan my days around it. Let me give you an example. And that example will be today or many other days where I plan to film videos for you guys here on YouTube. Now, what happened to me so, so many times in the past where I'd end up wasting a whole day and not get any filming done is I would give myself a short window for filming. I remember this came up when I had someone staying with me, a family member of mine for a couple of months. And at that time, I wasn't so comfortable filming with other people, not even in the room, but in the apartment. And so having someone there, I then asked them if they could go out for a little bit during the day, right? Hey, can you go out for a couple hours? I need to do some filming. And what would ultimately happen is there was this lingering pressure that, hey, this person's gonna come back soon. And I wouldn't have enough time to, let's say, go through the procrastination phase to get ready to film. By the time I was almost ready to film, I'd be looking at my watch thinking, oh, they're gonna be home in an hour. You know what, there's no point even beginning to film. And then the day would be a bit of a write-off. Of course, having someone stay with you isn't the only time that you can be interrupted in the middle of your process. This happens to me on some days where I'll have a group coaching call scheduled at say 1 p.m. and it's 10 a.m. and I wanna start filming, but especially right now, we're in Spain, we're in a new apartment we just got to, it takes some time to figure out the lighting, figure out where in the apartment to film and all that sort of stuff. Not to mention, you know, the dreaded having to actually shower and do some kind of shaving and all that stuff as well. It's just a lot of work that goes in. And if you spend that first hour, say getting everything set up and then you look and again, you have a meeting coming up, what ultimately can end up happening is you don't end up setting up and then starting to film in my case, right? It's filming. And so what I try to do now as much as possible is number one, anticipate that there's setup time to everything. Some projects have less setup time than others. For instance, writing is often just turning on a laptop, whereas filming has more to anticipate, but also that there's a built-in procrastination time. You know, today I went and I walked unnecessarily to the grocery store to buy a few things. I watched a bit of a TV show, which is totally not what I should be doing on a Monday morning, on a work morning. I had a couple breakfasts, way too much coffee, but I'm aware enough now of my own patterns to know that that's my, we could say procrastination time, but maybe a better label is like anticipation time. That's how I prepare for creative projects. That's how I'm getting ready basically. And if today was set up where now it's what, four, four thirty when I'm actually filming here. If today was set up where I had meetings, even from three, there'd be no filming getting done today. And a huge part of this day would have been a write-off. I would have went through that procrastination, warm-up, anticipation time, and then when it actually came time to film, wouldn't have actually got into it, and then the day would have been a write-off, at least in terms of the filming side of things. So what I try to do now is whenever I have creative projects that I think I'm more likely to need some of that anticipation time, 
I give myself the entire day to do it. I don't make plans in the evening. I don't have plans in the afternoon. And I basically say to myself, hey, you're going to get this done before the day ends. And if you need a two, three, four hours to anticipate, <laughs> to mentally prepare for it, then so be it. But ultimately, once you get into it, you'll get into the flow and get it done. I know that's very true for myself with filming. Once I get everything set up, once I get over that initial sort of block, then I'm able to film three, four, sometimes five or more videos in a day. But it took me a long time to realize this and to not only anticipate that I need that time, but not to feel guilty about it, not to feel bad like, oh, I didn't get right to work, therefore I screwed up the day or something. Then I feel bad about the procrastination, which then puts me in a bad headspace, and then I don't actually start getting the work done, which obviously creates a really bad pattern and can end up where weeks go by without any kind of filming. Now, some of you, especially if you've been in my free freelancer program or you know some of the training I've done around productivity and getting things done, might be a little confused right now because you're thinking, Dan, like one of the things you taught us is that when you were actively writing books, and I've published quite a few books, so I, I got really disciplined at that time, is I would write two hours in the morning and it was a set time. There was no procrastination time. There was no lead up time or anything like that. And this advice I'm giving now is quite a bit different. And yes, that's completely true. Both approaches work for different things. So what I actually plan to be filming today is not this video on procrastination, but a video series on adult ADHD. And it's a series that's going to go quite a bit more in depth than I sometimes can do in a single video. It's a series that's going to go into some territory I don't usually touch on. And it's because of these new challenges in it that it's something I'm not exactly comfortable with yet. And I'm still having to wrap my head around how to present some of the material. Because of that, there is that procrastination, this lead up time that I need. Whereas if I was filming a regular video on a topic I was really comfortable with and that I talked about all the time, I may not need that lead time. So that's the main difference between these two. If there's something that's a creative task, but a little more routine. So for example, when I answer your Ask Dan questions on my podcast, I do these about 30 minute recordings. I'll improvise, you know, I'm not taking notes before about how I will answer anything like that. And that's something that is, I would say, creative and is on the spot. And I probably would procrastinate years ago, but now I'm really comfortable doing. And so those sorts of creative tasks, you know, writing every day, if you're already in the flow and you're writing material you're really comfortable with, I would say schedule those in. Don't give yourself all this build up procrastination or anticipation time. Just jump into them and you can build that habit. But something that's newer that you're not quite sure of the material, that's maybe a little intimidating and you think maybe I'm going to need time to process this to think it through. Those are the types of creative projects that I do give myself entire days to really um, not only wrap my head around and make sure I do it, but ensure there's no excuses, ensure there's no way to weasel my way out of it. Because sometimes the things that are uncomfortable creative projects, we're maybe a bit worried that we won't do well, that we'll fail, that we won't know how to do it. And perhaps unconsciously, not only can we procrastinate, but we can find ways to maybe skip over that video series or just, oh, not have time for that. There's an important meeting and ultimately never get that stuff done. Let me know in the comments if you think a strategy like this will work for you as well when it comes to overcoming procrastination and getting your creative projects done. Leave your answer down in the comments. I read every comment that comes in and I make sure to respond to every comment that's at least left in the first couple days of a new video going up. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. If you are new to the channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button and I'll catch you in the next video soon.